Xalabu, native Mi'kmaq for the one who paws. This is the caribou, the ancient wanderer of the north. Caribou evoke images of great herds surging over barren lands, yet that is only half the story. Other races exist, far less numerous, yet nomadic just the same. What all caribou share is the innate need for vast areas of space. Habitat is the key to their survival. The boreal forest. Stretching from Alaska to the Rockies across to Newfoundland, it is the largest continuous forest range in North America. The value of a forest is determined not only by its economic uses for humankind, but by the rich diversity of life it contains. This is the home of the woodland caribou. These caribou spend their lives in the wooded habitat of the north and are the largest subspecies. Less migratory than their barren ground cousins that form the great herds, woodland caribou travel the forest in small groups. They live in constant movement. Their home range, which can cover up to a thousand square kilometers, is the largest of all North American deer. Like a number of species, these animals are dependent on mature and old growth forests for their survival, a dependency that may be their downfall. Woodland caribou are becoming endangered throughout Western Canada their numbers reduced through habitat loss, overhunting, and high predation. The small herds travel widely, living in areas where predators are less abundant. Bulls and cows range separately, coming together to breed in the fall. Unlike other North American deer, twins are uncommon in caribou, and the cows usually have their first calf at a later age of three or four. These factors, combined with high mortality of the young, create a population with little growth, making recovery a slow process. The Caribou Mountains. Not true mountains, but an elevated plateau over 450 meters above sea level, a virtual island in the sky in northern Alberta, Canada. With densities of less than 10 caribou per 100 square kilometers, woodland caribou are known as the gray ghosts of the forest. Roadless wilderness areas such as the Caribou Mountains are becoming scarce, as forested habitat is increasingly fragmented by development. What is so precious to caribou about large stands of old growth forest are the lichens that grow there. Tree lichens form a part of the winter diet, eaten mainly when caribou find it difficult to dig through deep and ice encrusted snow. But it is the ground lichens that caribou depend on most. These reindeer lichens enable caribou to exist through the long cold winter where no other deer can. Formed from a union of fungus and algae, lichens survive under harsh conditions, yet are sensitive to air quality. Only mature forests can produce enough lichens to support woodland caribou through the winter. In a way, caribou are indicators of the condition of the forest. Where there are woodland caribou, there is a large, healthy forest. Queen 
Elizabeth Island. High above mainland Canada, winter maintains its icy grip for most of the year. Only one kind of deer can live in this freezing desert. Here, the most endangered and smallest race of caribou, the peri caribou, survive in a harsh yet delicately balanced ecosystem. Like all caribou, they are incredibly adapted for the cold, but the biggest threat facing the peri, perhaps all caribou, is the threat of global warming. Peri caribou have evolved to deal with adverse weather and wolves, but they may be unable to deal with the rapid climate change that could unbalance their world. In this land, the peri caribou walk the fine line of survival. South of the high Arctic lie the barren lands, a vast treeless plain that teems with life in the short summer season. To the barren ground caribou, it is the destination of an urgent journey north in spring. Numbering in the thousands, the herds travel to their traditional calving grounds. These sacred grounds provide the perfect place to bring in the next generation. A calf is a born follower. Able to walk shortly after birth, its survival depends on staying near its mother. A grizzly bear sow introduces her new cubs to the world. The first year is the most vulnerable time for the calves. Only half of them will survive to their second year. Grizzlies are one of the predators that calves face. Soon, the young caribou can outrun them. The cubs look curiously at the potential prey. Eventually, they too will learn to anticipate the arrival of caribou in spring. The bull's journey north is less urgent, and they linger far behind the cows, feeding on the varied summer diet of willows and sedges. In July, they will meet up with the cows and new calves. Meanwhile, the bulls must eat constantly to nourish their growing antlers covered in blood-rich velvet. Plants grow slowly in the north, and caribou have adapted by constantly moving. If they did not travel widely, the large herds would decimate their own food supply. The tundra swells to life as the great waves of caribou flood the land. These massive herds form once calving is complete. Cows and cows make up these post-calving aggregates following traditional trails through the summering grounds, eventually meeting up with the bulls still moving north. Barren ground caribou are the most numerous of caribou, migrating between the tundra and the sparsely treed forest of the north. Calves can get lost in the confusion of the big herds, a potentially fatal situation. Like the great herds of Africa, the barren ground caribou form the cornerstone of the community. Their lives are interwoven with those of wolves, grizzlies, and countless other species that depend on these waves of life. Life dares to flourish in a land that barely thaws in the short summer months an act of defiance to eight months of cold.
no northern landscape would be complete without the wolf. Through evolution, predators and prey have shaped one another, each developing behaviors to counteract the strength of the other. It is like a game of hide and seek. Caribou wander and wolves seek them out. of caribou. Capable of reaching 80 kilometers per hour, they are the fastest animal in the north. To be successful, wolves must work as a team to single out the weak or those that hesitate. Wolves run down their prey and have been known to chase caribou over vast distances. Often, in such encounters, animals are wounded, providing an opportunity for those willing to take it. Healthy caribou can outrun grizzlies, but for a wounded animal, a grizzly is deadly. The drive to feed her two cubs outweighs the risk the grizzly sow takes in attacking a bull still able to defend itself, but too stiff to run. They may be equal in weight, but the bull is no match for the bear's fury and determination. While the death throes may be brutal by human standards, it is the grizzly and her cub's survival that is at stake. Caribou and grizzlies are just some of the members of the never-ending circle of life. Grizzlies are not the only ones to benefit from the caribou bounty. The wolves are the most important predator of hoof mammals in the north. They are not above scavenging. The relationship between caribou and wolves is a long one. Caribou provide food for wolves, and wolves provide a culling service for the caribou, taking out mainly the old and weak, keeping the herd strong. As long as there remains a balance between the two, the relationship is a good one. But once the balance is upset, it is usually to the detriment of the caribou. By mid-July, the time of torture for the caribou begins. Scores of insect species erupt from the wetlands. Mosquitoes, warble flies and nostril flies are just some of the pests that harass both woodland and barren ground caribou. Insects are an energy drain to caribou. Whole herds have been known to stampede to escape from these pests wasting energy at a time when they should be feeding, preparing for the long haul of winter. Tattered velvet signals the arrival of fall. Soon, the insect numbers will dwindle with the cooling nights, finally offering the caribou some peace. The metamorphosis to autumn is brilliant. The large herds now break up into small groups to continue their journey. As much as a thousand kilometers may separate their summering and wintering grounds. Following ancient trails, they scatter widely, pushing on further south towards the tree line where most will spend the winter.
caribou are excellent navigators. Much like the migratory birds, they move towards their destination with purpose. The newly shed velvet reveals the blood-stained bone. The antlers are now ready for the approaching breeding season. Caribou do not form harems. Instead, the bulls rely on large antler and body size to determine dominance and attract cows. As the days grow shorter, the sun loses its embrace on the land. All species that stay this far north are equipped to deal with winter. The feeding frenzy that lasts the summer comes to a close. For the woodland caribou, as with all caribou, October marks the start of the breeding season, the rut. The condition of the cow is very important to the success of the next generation. If she is not in her prime, she cannot breed or may produce a weak calf. Sparring allows the bulls to test their opponents and to establish dominance, but much of the rut behavior is ritualized to avoid injuries and death. The rut is spent with the dominant bull constantly checking the cows for their readiness. A cow will not accept his advances until she enters estrus. It is a brief but taxing time for the bull, often lowering his own chances for surviving the coming winter. Bulls do not eat much at this time, spending energy chasing cows and battling amongst themselves for the right to breed during this short but vital period. No other deer in North America is better suited for the snow than caribou. Their large concave hooves act like shovels, enabling them to crater through snow as deep as one meter to expose their favored winter food, lichen. Using their keen sense of smell, they find the lichens which make up half their winter diet. Winter is spent searching for windswept areas and shelters where the snow layer is thin, making cratering easier. It is believed that cows keep their antlers through the winter to help them secure dominance over craters 
and other food resources. The woodland caribou that exist in the Rocky Mountains are known as mountain caribou. They spend most of their lives on these slopes, descending to the valleys to feed when snow is deep. With the development of the north comes one of the most invasive threats to wilderness. Roads. Roads cut through the woodland caribou habitat, opening up areas and allowing easy access to wolves and hunters. In parts of the Canadian Rocky Mountains, the caribou are attracted to salt on the roads like moths to light. The attraction is hard to deter. Drawn to natural mineral licks, the caribou find these salted roads provide an easy alternative. Caribou habituate to the roads. Where highways cross migration routes or winter ranges, high speeds and careless driving can devastate these vulnerable herds already low in number. But that is not the only man-made threat to the caribou. In the relentless quest for resources, no area is too remote. Explorations and development increasingly invade the north. In Alaska, kilometers of pipeline crisscross the wilderness. Some of it cuts through the migration paths of the great herds, deterring or delaying movements at critical times. Not all threats come from mankind. Here in the Caribou Mountains, fire has burned over a third of the plateau. Prime habitat for caribou, gone. What is destroyed are the valuable lichens that sustain caribou through the winter. It can take more than half a century for a forest to mature and support enough of the lichens caribou prefer. But forests are not static. They are constantly changing. Despite the destruction, fires are a vital part of the regeneration of the forest. Indeed, fires may be necessary to maintain lichen resources in the long run, a process of renewal that can take decades. In the meantime, a patchwork forms of new growth, with islands of old growth, creating new habitats and diversity. Though caribou still make use of these areas in summer, they only travel through them in winter, having lost the lichens they require. While caribou have evolved with forest fires, there have always been alternative wilderness areas they could turn to. The threat today is that they are running out of options when burns, logging, and human development surround them. But life is resilient. Given time and a chance, the forest will recover, and hopefully, so too will the caribou. Caribou have evolved to deal with the uncertainty of the unforgiving north. Despite all their adaptations, however, mankind will ultimately decide the future of these animals. To choose our actions wisely, we must accept that there is a place for wilderness, and within it, caribou. of wildlife on Sunday evening from 8 o'clock when five follows the leopard's struggle to survive.